Hey guys, I hope everybody's having a fantastic day, whether you're watching this in the morning, in the afternoon, or in the evening, I'm glad you're here. Let's take a quick second to thank the channel members, thank you, thank you, thank you, I appreciate each and every one of you, and thank all you guys and gals who come in just to check out my knife and EDC content to see if it's something that suits you, I appreciate it, I really do. If you're so inclined and you hadn't had a chance yet, if you hit that subscribe button, that bell notification icon, and come back and watch more videos, that would really stoke me out. So today, I was going to and get some popcorn. This may be a little bit longer video, but I was going to go through some of my mini knives. Knives that are the little brother, maybe, of larger knives. So... This is, for example, the 940. This is the Protec Malibu or the Protec Strider SNG, and then this is the Artisan Cutlery Arion. And I wanted to start out with just a couple of knives, and then we'll go through them. So, not all every day do you I want to carry a full size knife, right? Not every day do I want to carry um, a big knife. It's just some days this little guy with this right under three inch blade will do everything that I might need this guy to do. Or this little guy may be just as slicey for the work that I need done if I don't want to carry this big guy, right? And then I love the little Protec PT-207. This guy is an absolute banger. I love this knife. It is just very easy to carry. Deep carry clip. Has a little texturing. It's in MagnaCut as opposed to uh, 154. And I'm just a big fan. So that's what today's video is going to focus on. We're going to focus on mini knives. So they'll specifically have the name mini in the title because they have a big brother so we'll start with one of my first mini knives um, and this is the Benchmade mini bug out now this was actually just your basic white uh, FRN it had um, the black blade I got it I think at Smoky Mountain Knife Works and then I um, it was on sale and I picked up these scales, I think from Sharp Dress Scales and Sharp Dress Knives. And it has turned out to be one of my fave little knives. I don't carry my bug out that much. I actually carry this little knife more because it's small. It's uh, nimble. It's light. My bug out, I love it. I use it as my size comparison knife, as you guys know. Keep leaving tip. As you guys probably know, um... It's got the uh, Met and Boss scales on it. It's actually 20 CV, my full size, where this is just S30 V. But for just a little everyday, small, light cutter, this knife gets it done. Just a great knife. Um, this is the mini bug out. And this will be our number first one we look at. We're not going to number these guys. We're just going to run through them. Next up, we have got the Emerson mini a100 so the mini a100 is going to be a little different kind of knife altogether. Um, it's going to be a thicker grind it's going to have a very unique grind to where you've got this uh, kind of bevel on one side but it goes to a flat grind but they're both scandied out so i don't know what you'd necessarily call that but it is very unique the A100 full size and the mini A100 are just kind of classic knives in terms of being hard working, back to basic. I mean, you don't find knives that are much more basic bitch than that, right? It's just a simple handle, simple blade, 154cm, nice liner lock. Fantastic knife. I mean, a really hard to use knife and a knife that I could probably trust my life on. So, this is the mini A100. The A100, of course, is going to be bigger. But we're going to move along and we're going to come to 
I thought about how to really add this one in, but it makes sense. This is the Demco. Guys, and just so you know, I'm rubbing while I've got these out. I'm just rubbing them with a little of my KPL um, tool steel oil. I just kind of have it soaked into this rag. It doesn't leave a lot of residue behind, but it does seem to give it a little extra protection. But this is the Shark Cub, right? I'm a huge 20.5 guy. I don't have an 80-20, but my buddy does. I've reviewed them. I'm very familiar with them. But the Shark Cub, to me, was a perfect mini to the Andrew Demko 20.5. And this was offered. This is the OG when it first came out in 20 CV. Now they've got it in all kinds of different price points, which is great because it's such a popular knife. It's so thin. It's, to me, such a more manageable knife, even though the 20.5 is not a big knife. But again, a lot of the time, for what I do, a smaller knife is just fine, especially in the summer. It doesn't take up a lot of weight. doesn't take up a lot of pocket space. And the Demco Shark Cub, even though it doesn't have many in the name, to me, I imply it to be many, and I'm a big fan. Moving on, we come to another one that doesn't have many in the name. This is the Hinderer Half Track, as opposed to the Hinderer Full Track. So, the Half Track being the mini equivalent to the Full Track. Now, this is a bigger thicker knife. When I say a thicker knife, this is your full hinderer stock. We can get the mic out if we wanted to. Not that we necessarily need to, but the blade stock. 0 0.1650 scales. 0 0.1710. So, you know, you got a full size heavy titanium magna cut knife here. Hard use Hinderer, made in the USA. This happens to be the Warncliffe. The half track is available in several different blade shapes. The, the half track um, Warncliffe is what I was after. I love the point. I love the ergos of the knife. It's an absolute shredding machine. Um, whether you're murdering out some cardboard or you're opening packages or you're cutting Hell, if you had to cut roofing tiles, whatever you have to cut. I'm just at the early stages of a ream of paper, guys, so I have to struggle with it to get it out. Again, thicker blade stock. This is Magna Cut. Whoops. See that foam I cut up out of my uh, mat? Very pokey tip. But just a great knife. I love the little half track. It's by no means a light knife. Um, so you don't really get that mini benefit. But I guess if we're comparing it to the full track, it is a lighter knife. And this one is sporting a Lynch clip that was gifted to me by my buddy said Stevie. who got it for his uh, J-Cape. Or not his J-Cape. His uh, McNeese. And then ended up, I think, being part of the reason that they offer the McNeese clip now. He helped them. They developed it with his help for him, so he didn't have to grind the uh, the tab off that this one has that sits in to the hinderer. So this is the hinderer half track in Magna Cut. It's a banger. I consider it a mini, even though it doesn't have many in the name. Moving on, we come to one of my favorites, one of my first over hundred dollar knives, and this is the Benchmade. Mini Griptilian in the Mel Pardue, whose grandson I met at Blade Show just by happenstance. Super nice guy, super talented. Um, this is the one that's got the, the Spidey type hole and the Sheep's Foot blade, G10 handles, regular clip. I haven't even updated the clip yet because, again, like I said, this is a knife, one of the first, the by far the first, what I would call nice knife premium knife um but it is 20 cv in the g10 it is super sharp and slicey the griptilian is a great knife i've got a uh a doug ritter coming up here soon that's once he moved on from bench made i'm more of a fan of his knife but this little knife this blade style did not go with him so this is totally unique to bench made I wish I had a full-size one to match this. However, by the time those came around, 
Um, which they were always around, but I'd kind of moved on to different stuff. But this is a great little knife. This is my little Benchmade um, Mini Griptilian in the Mel Pardue uh, Sheep's Footy Blade. So moving on, and we'll try to keep this short, we'll come to the Hogue. The Doug Ritter uh, RSK, um, you can see here the body is very reminiscent of the Mini Grip. However, just like the full-size Ritter and the full-size um, Griptilian, the G10 on this knife, plus it's a little less expensive, is much more aggressive. Not aggressive to the point to where it's uncomfortable. It's just much less slippery, if that makes any sense. The texturing so much better. Comes with a deep, uh, deep carry clip standard. Comes with a 20 CV uh blade standard where on the one I showed you the G10 that was an upgrade when I picked up this knife now they've gone up since then but so have Benchmade's much more this was like $158 in 20 CV thumb studs much better the cage look at the different difference in just the thickness of the Hogue cage versus the Benchmade Look at the difference in the stud. The grip is so much better. You can tell the G10 there is much grippier. They're both great knives, but I'm a huge, huge fan of the Ritter Hogue um, RSK River Survival Knife. And I forget the letter designation, MK2. But this is a great knife. Great mini. Moving on, we'll come to a mini that's not so mini. And that is the Mini Adamas. And the only way this bitch made that this becomes a mini knife or when you realize it's a mini knife is when you see the full size Adamus. Whether you look at the full size manual or the full size automatic, the Adamus is a big tactical survival knife, right? That's what it's made for. So the mini Adamus for me fills a void of a perfect medium size knife, even though it has even though it has mini in the name. This is by no means, in my opinion, a mini knife. It's got a thick, thick crew wear blade, treated crew, crew wear blade that I know I could drive through a tomato can. I know I could probably drive it through a car door. Um, it's very slicey. This is the knife that when I was doing a blade adjustment on it, it cut through my pinky um, fingernail. Worst finger cut I've gotten since I've been playing around in the knife game, knock on wood has a deep carry clip. I put these AWT scales on. It is buttery smooth. Reverse finger flick is butter. And just to give you an idea, when you look at this knife next to other mini Benchmades, where's our Griptilian? You'll see that it's all together. Even though it's the mini Adamus, the Adamus as a whole is bigger. So it's going to come in at a much bigger size but for me it's perfect it's a banger i love to carry this knife i love the awt scales for some reason the speed holes didn't do it for me um those by by the way the scales are sniper gray uh, aluminum uh, not cerakoted the other finish next we have one of my favorite knives top 10 for sure i had the berg blade sweeney and I traded it because it was actually just a little bit longer, right around the same size, maybe a little bit longer than my Spyderco Paramilitary 2. And I just wasn't carrying it that much. And this is before I knew about the Mini Sweeney. I had no idea there was going to be a Mini Sweeney. So when the Mini Sweeney came out, I'd gotten rid of my Sweeney, but I loved the knife. I loved the action. I loved the blade material. Um, I think it's M390. I loved the way that it, it had some of the best detent of the year, the Sweeney did. So when the Mini came out for me, it was a no-brainer. I was a little surprised at how Mini it was, because some Minis are smaller than other Minis, right? Um, because we'll show you what I mean by that. I'm trying to get a piece of paper out. I need to, I need to do a little, maintaining over here on my uh, ream so it's easier to get my paper out. 
But the Rogue Blade Sweeney is a tall, I mean, a longer, tall, flat ground um, drop point blade that is just absolutely great for EDC, great cutter, great carry. You've got a deep carry clip, which carries to about right here. Um, but super, super sharp tip. Great for splinter digging, poking, prodding, saving slurpees. Um, again, the Bird Blades Mini Sweeney, kind of a small batch run, uh, OEM by Riot on bearings, and just an absolute winner. So that is a fantastic Mini. And moving on, we come to a knife that I traded for for my brother Paul Mills that I'm absolutely in love with fits my hand like a glove and this is the uh, Microtech SOCOM Bravo the mini the, the mini Microtech SOCOM Bravo and it is a little bit dirty because I've been using it I've been carrying it but it is fantastic it has this beautiful backspacer I think it's OEM by Reich beautiful floating backspacer Nice carbon fiber with this recessed liner or frame lock, drop shut action. You've got these little, I call them guides, that just make this knife impossible to fail. For the reverse flick, it's money. The thumb studs also act as a stop pin, really lock it up. This is the Tanto, which I love. Let me get. What I'm talking about is cutting my paper. Uh, wrapper so it's not so loud um, when I go into it. So Microtech as you guys if you follow the channel know when I did my stitch review it is the stitch Ramlock which I bought new uh, I forget where I ordered it from but it's the sharpest knife that I've ever had from the factory right so it's super super sharp the Bravo is no exception very slicey M390 Great, great little mini knife. It is a smaller knife. That's one of the reasons Paul was up for trading it because it was just a little small for him. But I feel it fits my hand great. And again, I'm not going to lie, I just like smaller knives. It's kind of turned into my jam. I still like my big knives. I like to carry a big knife. Um, there are times I love to carry a big knife. Um, weekends, things like that. But when I think about it, most often... These littler knives, or smaller frame knives, will do enough for me. And that's something I always wrestle with when a knife comes out, especially when I was buying a lot of knives. Is this a knife that's going to be too small for me to truly utilize? And in the case of the little SOCOM Bravo, absolutely not. It's a banger. Great knife. I'm a huge fan. Moving on, we come to another Hinderer. This is, again, Mini's not in the name, but this is the Hinderer 3.0 XM18, which the XM18 is a 3.5 inch blade, 3.5, and it's a bigger full-size knife. It's got thicker scales. It's got, I should have grabbed it. Let's see. That was bad. So the 3.5, is just a bigger full-size knife, right? So again, of course, different blade styles. This is a Spanto 3.5, 3.5 inch blade versus the Hinderer 3.0. And the other big difference in these two knives are the thickness of the blade stock and the thickness of the scales. I look at the 3.0. If you're like me and you've got, you know, I've got large, medium, large size hands, large size hands, I guess you'd call it. Um, they're not extra large, they're not huge, and I don't have very, very thick fingers, but this knife, for me, just works as the perfect gentleman's folder. I love it. I've got a Warncliffe, and I've got a Skinner. Uh, fantastic knife, 20 CV, the Hinderer XM18 3.0 is another Hinderer Mini, in my opinion. Moving on, we come to... What was that? Oh, that's Tate. We come to the Spartan Harsey 3.25. So this is the Harsey three and a quarter by Spartan, which just for a little 
um, I guess you'd call it trivia, the same size as the Spartan Harsey Talos, which is their budget brand, the field grade, that you can get for about 100 bucks in CTX X XHP, CTS XHP. It's exactly the same profile as the three and a quarter inch Spartan Harsey, but this knife is on washers. It is absolutely delightful. I've got the full size Harsey too. I wanted to collect the Plague Doctor series because that's kind of when I came into the community, not when the Plague Doctor was around, even though, you know, it was around a similar time, right? So this one's an S45VN. It is a very small, little dainty, tactical banger. When I say banger, this knife is, is simple, and uses the same T15 pivot system as the larger Harsey. So this knife does not play around. This knife has a thicker grind. It's a piercer. It will get things done should you need it to get things done. It is made in America. Uh, just a super, super nice knife. I was late to the game on a lot of these knives because like I've always kind of preached, and preaching is the wrong word, but what I've always said, keep an open mind because the knife hobby for me has really been an interesting hike that has taken me down a lot of different trails, right? Starting with certain knives and then graduating to different knives and finding the things that never attracted me before, like the Olamic cutlery that I discovered when I reviewed my buddy's A to Z that I think came out last week or this week, I forget when. But what a wonderful knife. And that's a brand that had never crossed my mind. The I reviewed it. Oh, maybe I'll attach it to this video at the end. But it is a California made. I had the Wayfarer Bolster Lock um, Sheep's Foot Damasteel that I borrowed from him. Again, a knife that I'd seen a thousand times as I'd searched websites for other knives. However, it never really attracted me to it. After holding his for a couple of days and really enjoying it, there was a lot to be said for it. So, um, it's a fantastic knife. So this is a Spartan Harsey, or Mini Harsey, even though it doesn't say Mini in the name. The 3.25, the Plague Doctor, in S45. I love this knife. So finally, we come to my mini grail which is the mini koenig arius it is a fantastic specimen the full size arius i reviewed early on because my buddy a to z has my dream build a flipperless um, in blue titanium i forget the pattern but it's an absolutely gorgeous knife he let me take that knife and the evo 30 that he had when i had did not have any koenigs or any evos at the time and I was never, because we'd both been to Blade Show before, and the Evo seemed too big for me. But what happened over that week is I realized that the full-size Arius was definitely too big for me to carry and wasn't practical. But the Evo, I fell in love with it and ended up getting a 3.0. So the finest mini in my collection, and I'll put it up there for one of the finest minis. I think I do not have a Kung Wu Compadre, I mean, I have a Padre, um, which is a fantastic knife. I know that's an awesome mini. I just don't own one, so feel free to leave a comment. What about, what about? I totally agree. I'm a huge fan of the Padre. I just don't own um, a Compadre, is that what it's called? But there are a lot of great minis out there. Feel free to leave me some comments on great minis that you, that you like. But these are the minis in my collection. I'll try to keep these since they're smaller more on the vertical see how many we can get in there i don't even know how many we have out here guys i think there may be 15. i think i may have come up with 15. you see it's definitely 14 or 15. Uh, so we've got the koenig Arius, the spartan harsey three and a quarter the hinderer it's got a hair on it the hinderer three inch xm18 the microtech socom Bravo, Tanto, the Berg Blades, Mini Sweeney, the Benchmade, Crew Wear Mini Adamus, the Benchmade, Mini Grip, Mel Pardue with the blade hole, next to the Hogue, 
RSK, Benchmade 945, which is the Mini 940. We've got the Emerson A100. We have got the Andrew Demko Shark Cub. We have got the Hinderer Half Track. And I think I'm just going to be able to squeeze in that bench made mini bug out. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 13. So I was close. And I know I can make it 14 because I guess a micro falls into a mini kind of frame of mind. So this is the Corvid M, the Corvid Mini. Concept knife. S35 VN, um, black blade, really awesome, uh, carbon fiber scales, tiny little knife, little liner lock. Even though it says the Corvid M, for me, I think of it as a micro, but it's been a great knife. I really like it. Um, so that's 14. There we go. And i tell you what we can do. We can go without being dishonest at all and say that my Civivi baby banter even though it doesn't have many in the name is one of my size comparison knives is going to fit the position of many because we've got the wee banter and the Civivi baby banter so that's 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 my top 15 minis that have many in the name or implied many guys i appreciate you all if you made it this long thank you thank you please hit the subscribe button look out for the guy or gal to your left please look out for the guy or gal to your right look out for each other go forward with love in your heart and choose debate not hate i love you all peace